And smart. You can tell he knows kind of where go. to sit in zones. Yeah. The quarterback scrambles. He knows where to go. Because, I mean, you got to be smart to play quarterback. Well, Look you, at this desk. Yeah. Look at these two at guys. Quarter, that's right. <laughs> Yeah, that's right. Two smart guys that used to play quarterback. We weren't smart enough to keep playing quarterback, though. <laughs> We're stupid enough to host podcasts. That's what we do. We talk in front of a mic. I don't know. Ugh. There is there is a like a line of being too smart for your own good playing quarterback. Totally. Now, it seems to be less, I don't know why, now than maybe when we grew up. Mm-hmm. Like Now, it's like uh, the smart guys seem to be able to process it and be smart. Right. But I do feel like, and you correct me if I'm wrong here, if my take is wrong here, because this is a take. It's yeah. not like I've done real research here. Okay. But I do feel like as I was growing up, there was like, I talked to my dad's coaches and friends, and like, if you were too smart at quarterback, they were literally like, well, he's like too smart. He's asking too many questions. He's reading too deep into this subject. Yeah. Right. He's a little too analytical. Like you're too good for your, you're too smart for your own good here. You know, where it's just like they question everything. And I was with a few quarterbacks like that in my yeah, career. Yeah. And I had a head coach that was like, you're too smart for your own good. Stop asking so many fucking questions. Right, I'm right. not going to say who it was, <laughs> but there was really that. Uh, but it doesn't seem to be an issue anymore. Yeah. And then with the Eli Mannings of the world mm. and all these other guys have great, really smart, you know, uh, yeah. Wonderlick scores. Yeah. It seems like that's a myth now. And I would you say you should be smart. And again, really this smart. Is just a, a reaction take to yeah. what you just said. But right. it's. Uh, it's wonderful to be super smart on on the front end. Ask yes. the right questions. Right. Grasp all this terminology and all these concepts. But at some point, in the moment, you got to turn that off. And it's not about being smart. Like, yeah, get yeah. out of your own way and right. just have the, the right reactions. Yeah, right. So I mean, that's where people say, "Oh, he's too smart to play." Right. If he's thinking about it in the moments and trying to analyze that's it, the, then that's the problem. Then You're you right. can't play. You're right. There's the guys that I was with that were like that. There yeah. was two, and it was just like, wait, dude, the guy's wide open down the middle. I know right. he's the second read, yeah. but just fucking throw it to him. He's yeah. open. Forget it. I know coach said you had to go here first, uh, but you saw it. Just go there. Right. And but I guess, and that's what makes like Peyton Manning and Brady who yeah. they are. Yeah, exactly. Because they are the smart guy, like you're talking about before, but then they have like the instincts and the natural feel for the game to be like, okay, I'm not a robot. Like, yeah. You know, coach said I'm supposed to do this, but I just noticed right. this, and I'm going to throw it there. Right. And, yeah, so yeah, you're right. Okay, that was a good talk. I had the same Wonderlic score. Don't want to be score. too smart. Yeah. Same Wonderlic as Dan Marino. Did you really? Release was not quite the same. Not quite the same. Yeah, just uh, just a bit yeah. off. Uh, so, wait, Wonderlic, Dan Marino. Yeah. I, have, I feel like I have a pretty good feel. I think it was, was it Marino Mid-20s, or Mid-20s, late-20s? It was. Mid, I figured if it was Marino or Elway. It was very average. It was very – I think it very was Marino. Average. Elway was pretty up there, I believe. Elway was up there. Okay. I mean, Elway Whichever was, one of those two dudes was kind of middle of the pack there. I think Marino was considered middle of the pack, which is yeah. where I was as well. Okay. I, mean, I was a middle of the pack guy. We should wonder lick it now. I, I, I would love to. It's actually a fun test. Can you get it? I, I mean, I'm sure we can. I mean, all these agents are I don't getting even it. Rem- but, I remember taking it, but I don't remember like what the questions were about or anything. It's it's just like it's uh, it's 60 questions progressively get harder, one through 60, so they just keep getting harder. Mm. I took the test twice. I, I know I've told it on here before. Why'd you I, get it twice? Once illegally a scout my senior year in college right yeah um just he went, smuggled you he, the wonder he, he, he went no he went he's like hey when practice is over today right, he's an old scout it was kind of famous around the league yeah i've told people in the nfl about this and they're like oh yeah he's on mouse he would do that that's for sure hey hey he came over to me as i was getting dressed for practice right where scouts weren't even allowed to be in the right, locker room no. but he was one of these guys that was like eh, f- it i'll yeah. bend the rule here and he came over to me and i'm getting dressed he's, hey sims after practice just come see me in this room over here i'll be in there just Five ten minutes, all I need you for. That's so okay, shady. cool. I know, but you know, he was he was around a lot, and I liked him, and he talked ball. So yeah, okay, cool, sure. But then I went in there, and he goes, "Here, I just want you to take this." And it was the Wonder Lick, you know. And I was probably at about a month left in college football season. Yeah. And I took it. I did pretty good. I think I got a twenty-seven on that one. Yeah. But then when I went to the combine, I got I and mean, Pete could probably look it up. I think I got a twenty-four or maybe a twenty-three. Okay. Somewhere in there. But it was all because. I didn't know a few of the vocabulary ones. Like the one I took at school, I just got lucky in the vocab questions. We were yeah. like, I know these ones. Yeah. And I remember I got 
22. Shit. 22. Fuck you, Pete. You're supposed to say 23 or 24. <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, but I got into the NFL. I remember going, damn, like some of the, the vocab words that were in the middle. Yeah. I just didn't have the feel for them. And that's oh, was yeah. the difference. I don't remember. I, don't, I, I wish I did remember. Yeah. yeah. We'll do that. Maybe we should do that like dead time, okay. early June. We'll take a wonder lick. I remember the Giants had me take a 400 oh. question, multiple, t- 400 questions. No doubt. And I got the sweet windbreaker for it, though. Yeah. Oh, yeah. cool. I made up for it. Yeah. I was so pissed taking the Giant test. Awful. I was so pissed. I did it at the Senior Bowl, and I was literally like, I remember, you know, college football ends, go home for a few days, train, go to the Senior Bowl, I'm practicing all this. It's been a crazy busy time, and the Giants it's, go, go in the room here and take yeah, this test. Take and this I'm going, okay, sure. question test. Okay, it's an hour and 45 minutes later, yeah. I'm still here taking this test. Yeah. And I was mother***ing the Giants, going, yeah. if there's one f***ing team in football that knows me, it's, yeah, and I've been around them though my whole life, I was in the locker room at three, Yeah. I know all of you people that just gave me the test, <laughs> and I I, I think with the Giants test, I think I didn't answer like the last 40 questions. Really? I think I just said You should have been like, uh, just wrote, like, last that's name what, Sims, yeah. dad, 22-25, Super Bowl, that's it. Suck I'm it. Done. You know me. Yeah. Yeah. I, anytime I had a physical problem, I came to the locker room. You know everything about me. Come on. I heard we're talking O-line today. Yeah, you Is know that right? Yeah. yeah. Good, uh, good subject I kind of sidetracked it Yeah, there. that's sorry. all right. Good. Yeah. O-lines and quarterbacks yeah. and wonder looks. Yeah. Before we get to your top five, yeah. which I think is top six, yeah, plus some I honorable mention dudes. Yeah, I here. Yeah. 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 Okay. Good class. Do that. Yeah, yeah I, I know you like it. Yeah, a lot of lot of first round picks there. I think we have some some traffic up top, as we like to say. I sensed when we were talking quarterbacks yeah. a little while ago. I'm like, I think he likes Malik Willis a little you bit said more it. than he has him ranked. You said it. So go ahead and take it from there. Yeah, I, I mean the quarterback rankings. Listen, you know me. I'm not one that usually changes my rankings around a whole lot. Nothing wrong with that. No, I, and I try not to because I, I put all my – I mean, I, I go hard on my evaluations. I don't go like, oh, let me watch a little and then I'll come back to it a few weeks later and see if I change. I try to go all in uh, all at once, and that's what I do. But, yes, if I had to make a switch right now, I'm going to make um, – Leave Corral at one. I think Corral is still the only guy to me that's worthy of a top half of the first round pick. But Malik Willis, number two, and Kenny Pickett, number three. I would like to make that change as far as Willis was my three, Pickett was my two. Let's flip those around. What was the deciding factor there? You know, I, I think really what I came down to is as the more and more I just thought about it, and I'm not even going to lie, my dad led me down this road a little bit. My dad reads my notes, right? He likes to look at it and stuff. And, hey, send me a picture of these notes. So I do it. And he was kind of looking at it. He made a comment to me about two weeks ago. He's just like, you mean, I'm reading your notes. Everything you say, like, you think Malik Willis is going to be better. Mm -hmm. You just made Pickett number two because you think he's better right now. Yeah. And he goes, but you're not drafting a quarterback for who's better right now. And I said, you're exactly right. He goes, You'd made Josh Allen your number one quarterback because yeah. you thought he was going to be the best quarterback in the league the second and third year or mm-hmm. one of those guys that by that time. And that's when I went, yeah, you're right, Dad. You're totally right. As much as I see there's the rawness factor with Willis and there's some things that I need to get cleaned up, yeah, I do believe that. And so that's, that's where I changed it. And, yes, I'm going to go with a little bit more of that wow factor, high-end talent. Yes, there's raw there and some things to work yeah. on. Over the guy where I go, we've kind of reached the ceiling, and he's good, and don't get me wrong, I don't want to be disrespectful, but just doesn't wow me a whole lot yeah. like I told you during that day. I think reevaluating yeah. doesn't mean you're admitting defeat. It's just that you're open to change, and that's just a smart thing to do. Yeah, so, well, I, I well try, to, try to listen to myself and, yeah. and, and, and think about it. Right, and my dad, I yeah. do. I trust my dad. And, you know, I'm, I mean, you know me enough, well enough to know that I think and talk about this stuff all the time. Yeah. So as sometimes, you know, again, it's raw. You just studied it, whatever else. You give it a little time to digest. You start to think of other little points that, oh, wait, I should have, this makes sense, and yeah. you start to juggle around. Wide receiver is probably another position I need to look at a little bit. Okay. I would tell you that probably the other one I'm looking at to where I go, hmm. uh, might need to readjust a little there, but all in all, for the most part, I feel good everywhere else. We'll save that one for, yeah, for we'll a later another podcast. Time. Right. Okay, offensive lineman. Yeah. Thinking about you evaluating the offensive line, like the other positions that we've talked about, quarterbacks, skill positions. I mean, these are all things pretty near and dear to, to yeah. what you're used to watching. Right. How difficult is it to sit down and grind out tape and come up with a list for centers, 
guards and tackles. Well, it's 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 fun. I, I like watching O line stuff. I do. You know, not that I'm gonna sit here and tell you I'm an expert and I'm you know I'm you know Dante Scar. I'm not Scarnecchia or yeah. you know one of the great O line coaches, uh, Bill Callahan and with the Cleveland Browns or anything like that. Did you spend time in New England evaluating these guys? I I, I mean I didn't. I got to be around yeah. Scarnecchia a lot when we did workouts and things and saw how he kind of put them through certain things. I certainly learned and listened to traits that he found very valuable for all the line, especially the tackle position, because at that time, too, we had Nate Solder mm. and Sebastian Vollmer up there yeah. who were big, you know, Eastern European blockhead types <laughs> that, you know, just whatever coach told them to do, they were going to yeah. do. Yes, sir. That was it. So, yeah, I learned a lot from that uh, and, and learned. Yes, I did learn some O-line play up there. I did. I had to draw his pictures up a lot of the times. So, yeah, I feel like, you know, I've been around some good ones. Not that I'm perfect here, but I feel like I certainly can spot a talented one. And I feel like I can at least know technique to a degree. Mm. I know there's nuances that I'm not as up on as right. some of the other great people, evaluators, all line in the NFL, but know enough basics to go, this is good, this is bad, and this will work in the NFL. Of all the positions yeah. that you evaluate in the for the NFL draft, which is every position right. on the field, yeah. is this the hardest one? It's the hardest because I think when you get towards the, the top, there's more little nuances like we're discussing a little that have to be taken into account. You know, as far as, you know, the arm length, the competition, what he exactly is asked to be doing schematic wise. And then you have to get into, you know, some little different things as far as, ooh, hip tightness and you know, can he squat his ass and get his ass down? The base, the punch, mm. the bucket steps. Yeah. You know, is he taking the right steps when he's pulling? Does he get his body kind of cheated in the right way? So those are the little things I think that like you know, maybe separated that are very finite to separate it at times. Right. That yeah, that can be that can be hard. But uh, I, I like I said, I kind of enjoy doing it. It's it's fun turning on big fuckers yeah. and just saying let's just watch, watch this guy people. kill yeah. people. Yeah, it was fun all those years when I was doing this with with Mayock. At least once or twice a year, he would call somebody a heavy legged waist bender. Yeah, <laughs> heavy legged like, waist oh, better. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. It's right. springtime again. Yeah, sure. Yeah, heavy legged waist better. Right. Yeah. I mean, you know, big power underneath the <laughs> underneath the body, and then you know, it's pliable. Can be yeah. in awkward positions. Can get low as he's pulling around the edge as a pulling guard and and get the bend going to get ready for that second level wrap around on the linebacker. I mean, yeah, there's there's a lot of cool lot, nuanced phrases yeah. with uh, O linemen. And there is a lot more athleticism. There's a lot more to it than size and toughness than, no than, doubt. than I think people realize. Yes, yes. Okay, putting this class in perspective a yeah. little more, the offensive lineman, before we get to your top five, yeah. let's take a peek at what you had last year. This time last year for the big guys up front. And how do you think this class compares? Uh, I think overall the class itself compared to last year is 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 better. I, I do. You know, that that would be the first thing I would say. We got a little bit of everything, right? Here, if you're watching on YouTube, this is a list of O Lyman drafted in the top ten over the last six drafts. For the most part, I mean they've been, they've worked out pretty well, except for the two thousand twenty guys, I would say there. Yeah. Andrew Thomas and Jedrick Wills. You know, Wills has been good. I don't know if it's been 10 pick good. Andrew Thomas has been disappointment for the Giants to this point. Mm -hmm. Everybody else there has kind of lived up to their billing. There's some either good or really good picks. Exactly on the list. right. I mean, Quentin Nelson's going yeah. to the Hall of Fame right now. Yeah. Right. McGlinchey's been really good for nice the 49ers. Player. Got hurt last year. Ronnie Stanley's the best left tackle in football mm. before he got hurt. Yep. Jack Conklin, it didn't kick ass in Tennessee. But it got real good, and then it got real good in Cleveland, so where he's very worthy of that. And uh, let's see where, where Penny Sewell goes, you know, from here. Let's and Thomas, see. Thomas was better last year. Yeah, Thomas was better last year, definitely. Yeah. Yeah, and I mean, I would think, you know, again, the Giants are, you know, they might be in the market for the O-line. We'll see where it goes, but – he, he's going to be starting on their own line for sure at one of the tackle positions. We've hit Wonderlick, uh, heavy legged waist benders, athleticism, maulers. Like, we're all set up and ready for top five now, right? Yeah, I, we're ready all, to go? all ready. And, okay. and like you said, it's top six. It's, it's top six. six. And, and just a, a overall thing here I mean, very good group, especially the, the top end guys. I, I think there's probably, I think you legitimately can have eight. O lineman drafted in the first round. Wow, definitely. You're talking tackle guard definitely. center. Yeah, the 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 honorable mentions I'm going to name after them. Two of them are are first round talents for sure, and I would I would think they're going to go in the first round. Hmm. These six to me, I think are pretty special. I you know me, I like to do the top five, but there's 
there was a guard here and the guy we're going to talk about in a second that I just thinks too fucking good that I have to leave him on. I got to put him on the list here. Okay. He's he's a phenomenal football player, but all these guys are going in the first round. Yeah. I mean, all six are going in the first round, and I think the two we name after will too as well. Maybe eight. Yeah. Makes me wonder what that means for the fact that we're wondering oh, about if two or three quarterbacks that's what, would go. Oh, that's what I mean. I, the more and more I look at this, I have a pretty good feel for the draft right now. Yeah. Linebacker is the only thing I'm not complete on. The one thing I know, yeah, you know, you hear people say there's no superstars in this draft. Okay, I, I would agree with that. Fine, there's no Miles Garrett, Jadavion Clowney, or whatever that kind of guy, right? Yeah, I get it. A lot of really good though, like whoa, you know, top twenty picks where you go, this guy's going to be a multiple Pro Bowl player and a starter for eight to ten years, right? And then there's a ton of, I, I like, sixty plus guys that I wrote twenty to do forty five on mm. in the draft. I mean, 20 through 45, 20 through 45. Okay, that's 60 guys. We're in the third round here. Yeah. So I think that speaks to the depth of the draft. But the thing I was getting to about your quarterback conversation there is I do think at every position, even this one here we're going to hit on, there's two or three guys that stand alone at the position. And there is a drop-off. Not mm. to say those guys at the drop-off aren't good, mm -hmm. but these three guys are a clear cut above the rest. Okay. And I think that's going to make the top 15 picks very valuable in a year where you look at the quarterbacks and yes, it's not really a, you know, a killer year to there's, you know, I wouldn't take you know, like you've heard me say, Corral's the only one I would even think about taking in the first half of the round. The other guys I would not. Willis probably right after that and pick it a little down the line. Um, but I, I think it's going to make those top 15 picks valuable because teams are going to look at it and go, wait, we need a tackle. We feel like there's only two or three that are really elite that we know like right now. Oh, we need a D-tackle. We need a D-tackle. We only feel like there's two, and then it's a drop-off. You know? So I think that's going to make it a little bit more valuable uh, and a little different than maybe years past. All right, one of the many signs yeah. we're going to have here in the next uh, hour or so of how much you like this offensive line class is the fact that the top five, as we've mentioned, yeah. is actually a top six. Yeah. Let's get it started here with six. Yeah, number six, Kenyon Green from – uh, Texas A&M. Uh, I mean, yeah, he's the guy that, you know, really, we're going to have another guard in front of him here in a second. But first off, huge body, heavy-legged waist bender. How do you like that, Paulie? Right Are off you, the bat. Yeah, if I it mean, fits. Really, it is. <laughs> it's, it's a bad thing. <laughs> Mike didn't uh, like it. But he didn't like it. Yeah, if you want right. to say it's a good thing, no, no, you I'm know down what? with that. It's, it's, uh, he's not heavy-legged. He's not heavy-legged. This is a really good athlete, guard. okay? He but he's got power, yes. He's a, that's why I go like heavy-legged that yeah. way. He can drive people, root people out of the ground that way. All right? Now, it's a body that's um, you know, maybe a hair pear shape, but a huge body, long arms, not the greatest upper body strength in the world. If there was one thing I would say was probably the negative of him in that, and and the reason I made him the second guard behind the guy we're going to get to in a second, uh, the stalemates, things like that, right? You're in the wrestling like this guy. Oh, man, we both hit each other hard. Now we're trying to you – know, he could fall off at times. He mm. might every now and then lose that – not want to say lose that battle, but not win that battle or continue to stalemate because he would fall off. But as far as all the athletic stuff is concerned, I mean, the guy is phenomenal. I mean, anything, really. Pulling, you know, uh, straight-ahead explosion – off the ball, you know, getting to the second level. Now, the reason he's six is there's a little bit of a rawness to him. He's not perfect technically all the time. He will take a wrong step every now and then or maybe take a wrong angle right up to the second level. You know, he talked about maybe the leg drive stops on contact every now and then. And he might fall off. But that's it's being, you know, very picky here. I'm holding it to a first-round standard. Uh, I was amazed by the player, let alone the guy has legit, legit potential to be tackle in the NFL. That was uh, what I wanted to bring he up. He does. But versatility yeah. yes. is crazy here. Yes. Okay, 13 starts at right guard in 2019. Right. 10 starts at left guard, 2020. Last year, seven at left guard, two at right guard, two at right tackle, one at left tackle. I mean, that's... It's the good and the bad. On one him. hand, it's great right. to have versatility. Exactly. On the other, it's like, well, if he was awesome at one, why didn't they just leave him? Well, there? because because he was he was awesome at one, but I think he was also the only guy that sometimes where they go, well, we got a guy that's a little bit better to fill in the guard behind you, and we're gonna make you the guy that has to do the toughest thing and go to left tackle, yeah, or right tackle. What'd you say there, Pete? The they had injuries. They had injuries. That they yeah, no, I know. Yeah. Yeah, it was it was all injury stuff. So that's they're just trying to get their guy on the field. So that's where the 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 film can be a little cloudy. You have to make sure you really watch him at guard. 
you know, tackle, yeah, there's going to be a few negative plays here and there. Now, there is. But I don't think it's like a thing where you look at him at a tackle and go, oh, whoa, he can't do that. Yeah. I just go, no, if you let him stay there and let him play and kind of get ready, used to the nuances, yeah. he could be a big-time left tackle. But I think for sure he's a big-time guard. That's for sure. You know, the pop off the ball, the way he can move people that way, you know, he's a little – he's very pliable. You know, the guy we're going to talk to in a minute is a little bit more rocked up and your stiff guard. This guy's got a little bit more of, hey, a little bit more of a soft body. It might be a little more center gravity related, you know, with just a little bit of a belly and stuff, but not sloppy. I don't want to yeah. say that. Just I'm trying to paint a picture for everybody out there. Yeah. Uh, always keeps a good base. You know, so everything you looked at athletically, you just went, oh, check it off the box. Oh, here's NFL defensive tackles. He holds his own and then some against them. So he was a really good football player. And like I said, the issues I had were just the position movement and a few little like just easy coachable fixes that I would look at to go, these aren't worries. This yeah. is just somebody's going to get on his ass and coach him a little. Thinking about his athleticism, and I know what you see on tape doesn't always mean, yeah. okay, it's going to show up at the combine. But go ahead and take here his combine measurements and kind of how he compared with a lot of the others. And basically, he had a very below average combine workout, which yeah, doesn't mean he's not a great football player. Right. But when you're thinking about taking somebody in the first round, d does this concern you? When you look at him compared to other people at his position at the combine, he was below average. No, it, it doesn't really. It doesn't. You know, I mean, again, I the 5 two, four, the 40, right? Mm -hmm. All right, that's slow. I get it. How much does that really matter? But for a it, guard? it doesn't. You know, this is the, this is this is a good conversation because we were going to get into this when we get down to the tackle later a little bit too. But like, yeah, tell me how that five three for Orlando Brown's working out. Yeah, that's right? the one of the best left tackles in football. Yeah. Who gives a f yeah. Like, what the f with that? But shit? the other areas that measure athleticism are, are kind of yeah. Down too. They're they're just okay. They're okay. You're right. You know, again, but like when I watch them pop off the ball, there's great explosion. You know, I'm not necessarily worried about his long speed. You see him pull around the edge mm -hmm. and or even get out in screens. I never at once went, man, he's just less of an athlete than I was expecting. You know, this was one where you turn on the film and then you go back and look at the profile a little bit and you go, wait, really? Are these his numbers? That's kind of surprising mm -hmm. because it just nothing shows of that. Nothing. So, you know, I don't know what the story is there, but um, – Hands down, NFL longtime starting guard, like I said, with a little bit of the versatility to move around if need be. And as I told you, I just, you know, he's dominant at guard at times. I mean, not at times. He's dominant. He shows true dominance there. And I think between that, the get off, the base always being good, um, you know, I, I looked at him and just said, this is a first round guard for sure. There's zero physical concerns with the players, the player. The negative is just a little of the coaching and the technique like we talked about and all the changes. Um, but he has a very high ceiling. And, you know, I don't think it's a very low floor either to go along with it. It's a really good football player. I think he did a nice job of, of grouping together positions here because yeah. as we move to number five, we keep the guard thoughts coming here. Yeah, number five, we're going to go with Zion Johnson from Boston College, who's a hell of a football player. Now, like here, to compare him with Kenyon Green, I don't think he's as athletic as Kenyon Green. Hmm. I don't. Yeah, watching the film, I went, no, Kenyon Green's clearly the better athlete. You're a big traits guy, so what makes him higher rated? Well, you know, this guy, like – you don't ever see him really do anything wrong. I mean, that's the big thing. So the other guy's a little bit all the potential, and like I talked about, there's a few raw elements in here. With this guy, too, you know, again, the film is awesome, and we're still talking about a very powerful, strong guy here and a pretty good athlete to go with it. A little stiffer than, than Kenyon Green, Green, who we were just talking about. But as far as, like, you know, pure power, getting off the ball, dominating blockers, I mean, letting no one even move him in pass protection. You know, always kind of being in the right positions body-wise. Other yeah. than his stance, he has a weird stance. Huh. He's got that, you know, kind of got that stance of like, I can't remember who it was back in the old day, where like the knee kind of collapses in on one side a little yeah. bit. Was Randall that Dur McDaniel. Is that Randall McDaniel? Yeah. Is that yeah. who it was? I know. I was going to say like Dermani Dawson at first, but I think you're right. It was Randall McDaniel. Yeah. Uh, so he kind of has weird that weird stance. stance. before he mauled everybody. Hey, well, that's kind of what this yeah. is. It's the only thing you question on this kid is the stance. Yeah. He's very instinctive. You know, Boston College, of course, they're very well coached up there, but you know, always the right angles to the second level. But you know, not as impressive in space as Kenyon Green, in my in in uh, in my opinion. 
But I think overall, the clean, the negative plays are less than, of course, he played guard the whole time, and he is truly like day one, you're going to be able to throw him in and start at guard right away. We've got the the, the measurables from the combine as well with him, and it looks much, much better. I mean, yeah. just the athleticism, he was right. uh, his, I mean, he was terrific at the combine. And he also has the versatility as well, Chris. I mean, 11 starts right tackle, 7 left guard, 11 left tackle, 11 left guard. I mean, he was all over the place. Yeah, I, I, I know. He, he can do it all. There's nothing you're going to look at. Again, this is another guy that I think if you had injuries on your NFL offensive line, he went, man, we got to play him a tackle. He could yeah. probably do it. He can. But he's made to be a guard. He is. He's got the guard build, the power. You know, you know, he's 34 inch long arms, but to me, the arms, I don't know, they don't pop off on film. And, you know, again, I'll stay it one more time. I thought the other kid was a better athlete. When I first started watching this kid, I went, oh, you know, he's a mauler, you know. He's, he's got the look of a good athlete, but there's a little stiffness to his game. But as I went on with the film, one of the things I wrote down is the more I watch, the more I kind of like the athlete. I do. You know, straight line, he's awesome. Pulling, awesome. You know, space adjustments, right? This is where I would say Kenyon Green had a different, a little bit better ability. Not that he was always did it better mm -hmm. because he might have not had the right technique at times. But when I say space adjustments, right? Like, you know, think about guard center. We're both blocking the nose tackle. And now I got to now I got to go to the second level and cut off the will linebacker or do something like that. You know, guys could make a move on him at the second level every now and then. Oh, he, I missed him. And then he got by me and went through the a gap. Right. Mm -hmm. a, so the, those were some of the negatives is where I meant the stiffness where Kenny Young green was a little more pliable and have been like, Oh wait, you faked me out, but I still can get back over there and knock you out of the way to where you can't get in the play. If that makes sense. I hope I'm painting the picture the right way there. Um, but yeah, I mean, I do like the comparisons. Yeah. I kind of like to doesn't ever lose a battle. This dude. Yeah. The stalemates is the other reason I would say I would go okay. with this guy because the stalemates ended up always going in his favor. Yeah. Because he had enough power, kept the legs going and his arms. You can even see it on film. His arms are just more developed and have yeah. a more strong look to him to where he could kind of win those wrestling matches more times than not. Sum it up kind of in, in one question, one situation here. Let, let's say a team is taking a guard. We're taking a guard in the 20s yeah. with our first pick. Right. Love both these guys. Yeah. Chris, what's the biggest difference between them? I, I just think I'm going to go with – the biggest thing I'm going to go with is one is totally ready and I have no questions about. The other one is maybe a higher-end athlete, mm -hmm. but not so much to where I go, wait, there's a few things in the technique that I got to, you know – that that bother me, right? Not so he's not such a great athlete that the technique issues. You go, oh, well, I'm not worried about that. So yeah. That's where I, I think I got to put Zion Johnson ahead of him that way. All right, yeah, he's a little lesser of an athlete, but I think in all other areas, he's a better football player. Okay, I guess that's where I'm going with that. How if high? That makes sense. How high would you expect I, him I to would, go? I, Twenty to thirty-two. That's kind of where I wrote, right in that range, somewhere in there. I mean, the one thing with. You know, the pass protection, I think, was the thing I was very impressed with. I really was. Legs were always underneath him and a good anchor. You know, very good punch and hand usage, which you don't always see from guards in the, you know, coming out of college. But, like, doesn't let tackles get into his body and get momentum, right? He kind of meets them and punches and stuns them right away. So now, oh, no, you big f***er, you're not going to get momentum and then yeah. run me over. I'm going to stop the momentum, and then we're just going to be in a stalemate fight right here. And like I said, he's very good in that. PFF summed it up pretty well. He's not perfect, but he has no glaring weakness on tape. That's kind of what it is. Exactly right. You know, he's not perfect, but he's, he's damn good. He is. And there's no question that... You know, he's a first-round guard and a starting guard really right away day one. Uh, I like both of these guys a lot. Like I said, Zion Johnson, I think it's just the, clean film, the, the film is cleaner and he's ready to go right now. All right, enough of these guards, although it was clear to see that you think that they both belong there in that back part of the first yeah. round. Let's get into the tackles. Yeah. The money position up front the here for money the first position. round. SEC is our first stop here. Yeah, Charles Cross, Mississippi State. That's where I'm going to go here. Now, you know, I know uh, a lot of people, he's, he's part of the big three as far as the tackle position is concerned, right? Um, really good specimen, you know, has a body you look at right away and you just go, oh, man, he just, he looks like an NFL left tackle, all right? He's got arms long as hell. So all the things you like for a tackle are perfect. Is he perfect? No, he's not. Is he as good as the other two tackles in the draft that we're going to talk about a little while? No, he's not. 
You know, does he have the potential to be as good as they do? Yeah, he probably does. But it's not one where you can just throw him up there in their class quite yet. What's your biggest concern that well, kind of keeps him out of that group of the top two? Two, two one, you know, can, can play a little high, all right? That was the one thing that I did not love. And then, you know, he's a little like, um, and I want to get to the, the tightness in his hips to really be in a strong athletic position and have your base underneath you. That's what I mean, where, you know, he at times can, it just seems too upright. And there are moments of when he can get pushed back or pushed around, right? And, you know, I'm big on base. You know, of course, that's it's a huge thing. You know, again, when Cam Jordan puts his hand on the ground and just goes, I'm going to that spot as fast as I can go, well, then you better have you some special base yeah. to stop that guy and put your foot in the ground and have an anchor to stop him. And that's always my concern with these type of guys. So that's my issue with him. He is the rawest of these tackles. Mm. Great feet. Awesome in space, okay? But, yes, can play, like, way too high, all right? That's that's the first thing uh, that comes together. Can have moments in pass protection where, you know, again, it can be less than because the mechanics aren't good. The feet can get close together to where you're like, well, you should never be in a position where your feet are, like, more narrow than your shoulders right. at tackle. Right. You're going to get pushed over. So those are things that you looked at. You know, he has things to clean up, but all the physical tools and ability to be big time. But, yes, his film, to me, was not on the level of the other two tackles we're going to talk about here in a little bit. Okay, we, we oftentimes talk right. about hands as it relates to quarterbacks. Yeah. Ten and three quarters, 92nd percentile. This description of his hands, I, I want to hear what you think about this. Big, strong, and sticky. Does that fit, and what does it mean? Yeah, well, I think what they mean by, like, sticky is that, like, when he gets his hands on you, they, they kind of stick on there. Right? Is that what they're meaning by that? Like overall, but he's not holding. I didn't think I didn't come away looking at his holding. Yeah. I didn't see like holding being an issue with him overall. Yeah. Now, what's an issue with him is how bland their offense is. Mm. It's you know one protection all the time. It's of course they throw the ball every play. They only run one run play. He's going to be clueless in the run game. He's going to be clueless. So he's very basic as far as that stuff is concerned. And he only started two years. In Mississippi That's State. what I mean. So he could be a guy where you draft him, and I don't think it's a guarantee he's like starting for you in year one. I don't think there's a guarantee. If you, you take know? a tackle in year one, aren't you most of the time thinking he's going to yeah. start I, on one yeah, side or the yeah. other? Yeah, I mean, I, you would like that to be. Now, he has like big time you know, starting potential to where he's good enough to where you take him and, okay, yeah, you hope he starts year one, but if he has to be your sixth all lineman or whatever and then you get him in the next year, so what? Um, but, yeah, this is a an athlete who needs to play and needs to be coached more. That That's really the biggest thing that I came away with more than anything else. You heard me about the pad level, you know, uh, doesn't have the same pop and physicality and get off and to be able to drive people off the ball like the two tackles we'll talk about or even like the two guards we just talked about. He's not quite at their level in that department. So, you know, those, those are the things I would look at more than anything. Um, and then you heard me say, you know, the mechanics, the anchor were not on the level, especially of the top two uh, pass protectors in the draft, in my opinion. I feel like in this class, uh, no matter the position we're talking, we, we've hit a lot of 40 times. They're like, boy, he's – yeah. These are fast this year. Right. I always find it interesting. I don't know if it's meaningful or significant. Just interesting when someone who's 6'5", 310, like Charles Cross, yeah. comes down underneath the five. So he runs a 4'9", 94th percentile of the combine. Interesting observation, but does it matter no, at all? No, that's what I mean. It doesn't matter. It, to me, it's an overblown thing again. It's it's just got the scouting world. All right, if he ran a 5'2", Which we talked three, about with the guard, who like I, you said didn't matter. I, I was wondering on the other end it if it's faster than it should be. If it's like it, – it's it's not that it's faster than it should be. He looks like he would run that. He is an exceptional athlete. Does it indicate anything, though, about how he can play tackle? Not really. Not really. I mean, to me, I would be concerned if I went, okay, he ran 5'3". Mm-hmm. And then I turn on the film and go, whoa, he's fucking sluggish off the start, off the ball. It's sluggish. Whoa. Ooh. All right. And then I start to go, man, anything he does laterally, moving his feet side to side, all that, damn, it's slow as shit. I'd go, okay, he's slow. He's a shitty athlete. Mm -hmm. That's it. You know? But there's also the Orlando Brown thing to go, oh, wait, okay. He ran five, seven, nine at the combine. Who gives a shit? Nobody ever turned the corner on him against Oklahoma. Nobody ever pushed him back. But – 
we decided the last 35 yards of a 40-yard race that an offensive tackle <laughs> never has to run all of a sudden mattered. Yeah. And that's to me where I just like, yeah, I don't – you know, it's a good thing to have, but it's sure. not – it's a, not a not – a, starter or a finisher for me either way right i guess is what i'm saying does that make sense it totally makes sense okay. I, I think that the main things that i take away of this is someone who just walks in and wants to learn about him of the three offensive tackles he's he's i don't want to say significantly but it he's sounds clearly like, three for me yeah clearly it's not like he's 2a no to whatever exactly your top right. two are no. so he's a little bit distant back there and he might be a little bit of a project in year one I, I i wouldn't be shocked i wouldn't be like if you told me oh he's not starting at the end of training camp yeah you know they're gonna have he's the sixth guy he's gonna oh, okay yeah okay i'm not shocked by that yeah. i understand that you know like you said he hasn't played a lot he came from a school that doesn't do a lot they throw the ball every play in the shotgun it's the same pass protection every play mm -hmm. so there's going to be a little there to it but you're getting a guy that does have the potential to be like all pro I mean, yeah. that's that's the thing you know there's there's no physical limitations or weakness to the player overall you just got to fix some of those things and give it a little time but yes to your point i wrote the other two tackles are top five ish top eight ish picks mm. this guy to me is 18 to 32 that's where now he'll probably be overdrafted because I, I think because of the measurables and what we're talking about here but to me that's yeah he's in the second half of the first round for me we're going to hit those two tackles here in a yeah. moment. Let's take a break from them. We get to number three. We go back inside. Yeah, number three, we are going back inside until one of the fun watches, and we're going to Baldy's home school, baby. Very close to my hometown, yeah, too. Is it very close to your hometown? Is that right? So, Tyler, Tyler Linderbaum, yep. center from Iowa. There you go. Paul's been excited for me to watch him <laughs> for two months now, and I watched him, and I understand why. Fucking guy is good. From Solon, Iowa, about uh, 10 or 15 minutes from Iowa City where the university is. Okay, so, yeah, all right. Uh, quite familiar with the family, with the town, the whole thing. Heard all about him forever. Or we had him in the All-Star game in San Antonio. We yeah, do. right. Um, he looked really good there, and he's had, had an awesome career at Iowa. A lot of talk about, okay, do you take a center who's undersized in the first round? Um, so you can just pick it up and take yeah. it from there. No, I, I, I would. I'd have no problem with taking a center undersized in the first round. I don't. I mean, uh, you know, one – Again, it's I, I never like to like put, you know, limits on what we're talking about. I'll, I'll never take a tackle who runs yeah. slower than five two. Right. Oh yeah, he's in the Hall of Fame. How do you feel yeah. about that now? Oh, I never take one under five two. Well, you're that's wrong. Right. You should adjust your thought there. Yeah. There's more that goes into that. Yeah, he's two ninety. I mean, again, I I'm almost gonna just read it. I, I you know first I went whoa athletic looking old lineman looks like Jason Kel Kelsey type mm. of body. But maybe even a hair smaller than Kelsey. Whoa, you could see how athletic the guy is right away. Second level, reach blocks. I mean, none of this is going to be an issue. Anything, speed, twitch, explosive, great. Hips, insane. I mean, pulling, you know, speed puller, adjusting on the fly, being in a weird position, getting low, getting out of it, going to another guy. It's all crazy. But, like, here, you know, here he is, and now, now I'm probably about 50 plays in, and I go – Big thing I got to figure out because I, I still hadn't seen anything to say no to it is can this guy block the Vita Veas of the world? What do you think? The Akeem Hicks of the world. Yeah. Right? That was my big thing. Now, is there any tape of the that's a giant nose tackle? Not really. No. You know, and again, even as awesome as the Big Ten is, like we were, we had this yeah. little talk right before the, the pod today. It ain't the SEC. Yeah. That's the one thing I'll, I'll say. I mean, again, the Big Ten's great. But the SEC's got like a professional defensive tackle on every team. Mm. And there's teams in the Big Ten that don't have that all the time. Yeah. But either way, my summation of that would be that no, he's not gonna have issues with that. First off, it, it the film is is impeccable. I mean, it's really impeccable. Okay, he is two ninety. I mean, I know he's the Big Ten, he's playing against some NFL defensive tackles next year or whatever. I know there's not a lot of them in this draft. Nobody he never loses a play. Yeah. I mean the the negative plays for him, Paul, are just like, oh, he double teamed with the guard and went up to the next level, and he just didn't crush the linebacker. The linebacker kind of squeaked by him because he took somewhat of a wrong angle or somebody bumped him as he was getting up there and he just knocked him <laughs> off balance. Like, it's never like, oh, he f***ed that play up for yeah. the team. Oh, he got overpowered again. Oh, he didn't move his feet good enough this time. There's never anything. And even when he is overpowered, somebody's bigger, I don't want to say overpowered because he was never overpowered on film. Yeah. But even when people were bigger than him, he's such a good athlete and understands the game and is so like instinctive 
that he knows how to get his body in positions and stuff to not let that guy make the play or make the tackle. You know, so that's where I make him number three because center is an important position in the NFL right now. There's a lot of good defensive tackles. Teams have a lot of teams that have small, fast defensive tackles where these big guards and centers can't match up with some of these guys. And he's going to be able to match up with those guys, the power guys. Yeah, that'll be a question. But, man, there's nothing on there for me to yeah. question it. It's just the actual size and the numbers on paper. Right. There's nothing that visually says that's an issue. I want to talk more about yeah. that. I have a pretty good comp for him, too, as well. There we see it right there. Um, as you can see, 6'2 and one He's not very tall. He's less than 300 pounds. Wingspan was really bad compared to others. Yeah. Arm length as well, hand size. Like, none of it, just in terms of measurements, would say first-round pick. But everything else about him when you watch him play says first-round pick. Really interesting video with him. And I think we have this, Pete. He wrestled. Tristan Wirfs in high school. I don't know if we have yeah, the video. I think we do. I, I've seen it before. I believe we showed it at the Combine, maybe. So, so Tristan Wirfs went to Mount Vernon, which is about five minutes right. down Highway 1 there from, from Solon, next time you're there. That's amazing. Let's see it again. Like, Tristan Wirfs, like, we've all seen him, and he's quite a bit bigger than Tyler, and he pinned him. Tristan Wirfs has not has been beat at right tackle like twice in his NFL career so far. Yeah. So, there, so, so here we go. I know numbers, we all want to look at them. There's all stuff to glean from all of these numbers. I get it. Yeah. You know, first off, you know, like what we're showing the measurables to there, you know? Yeah. Is that measurables just the center or all offensive linemen in general? Pete? It's... I think it's all offensive linemen in general. I'm yeah. going to be pretty sure, I think. Okay. Which, again, is just like, Which, well, who cares? Yeah, exactly. Why do you want to compare him against a left, left tackle? tackle? It's a totally different skill fair. set and means Doesn't nothing matter. to it. Right. Yeah. This see? is all offensive linemen. Right. So that's a good and point. Some, right. So that's, that's what we got to take into account here. Context matters. A lot. And then sometimes we look at things and, listen, I know arm length is important. Yeah. 31 and one eighth is small. Okay. But then, you know, we got other guys in football where we go, well, it's 32 and a half and he's the best center in football. Yeah. You know, is it really going to make the biggest difference in the world or you just go, oh my gosh, you can't do this. Right. You know, I just think. The toughness, the power, the ability to hit people and roll his hips through yeah. and push them back and stun them is pretty impressive. And then, you know, the center, not only the strength of the point of attack, but like we talk about, it's third down now. And now there's some athletic defense end who's lined up over me or something like that. You know, the quickness, the twitchiness, to me, that's almost just as important as anything yeah. at that position. And then they get to ask to do so much today in the NFL, whether it's the screen game and some of their polling and all of that, to where it's it's an important position and he's pretty perfect as far as the film's concerned. As long as we're on the Iowa theme, I, I think there's a comparison here that works very well. My, my junior year, my center was Mike Devlin. We're yeah. only playing the NFL for seven, eight, nine right. years. So <laughs> then the next season, we got to have one. There was this kid who was really smart and pretty athletic, but he was only about 260 pounds. Right. Casey Wigman. It's like, Casey's going to be pretty good. So he played 17 years in the NFL. I played with him. Played with in you. In Denver. Yeah. Right, right. And so, like, Casey was never that big. No. I, I don't I'm going to say ever, he was 285, 290 the year I, I played say, with him in 2009. I don't, I don't think he ever weighed more than 290 pounds. Yeah, I think it was probably 285 or anything. He, he had a Pro Bowl kind of career for a lot of years. Yes. And it was the same thing. He knew what he was supposed to do. He was much more athletic than people thought. Much. He could get out and cut an end. Casey, 285. I'm yeah. going to guess Casey was probably less than 285. Yeah. Uh, but the point is, I know it's easy because they went to the same school, but it sounds like you're describing the same player. It's a very similar guy. And has the game changed that much where someone who's 280 at center uh, 20 years ago, who was really good, can they still be yeah. with that size? Definitely. They definitely can. I mean, it takes a, it's a special, like Casey, a special guy that's got that kind of power yeah. and that's kind of a body. You know, but Jason Kelsey's not far off from that either. I mean, I'm going to guess you – I bet you Kelsey's 295, 292. Yeah. Probably not as much as whatever he's listed at. I bet yeah. you he's less than that, to your point there. No, but it's it's a position about how quick and explosive you can get on them. This is where these guys make up. Casey Wigman would win battles because he could snap the ball and get on the guy in front of him mm -hmm. before that guy could get off the ball and get the momentum to push him back, even though he was the bigger man. So he's already had his body on the guy as that guy was trying to go, and he's like, oh, I'm already on you. You stop your, uh, yeah. you're stopping there. So there is something to that, let alone, again, you know, that's strong. Okay, I'm, you know, this guy's he's, – he's to my right. 
and I got to make a reach block, reach block. Set hut, the quick explosion, get over there, the quickness just to get them in front of the guy. And more times than not, it's the most important thing there anyways. Yeah. And then he understands how to kind of stop him or slow him down in the track. So um, the guy's a first-round center. He has a chance to be really special, in my opinion. He's a fucking machine who never <laughs> loses a battle and does high-level NFL stuff yep. consistently in every game. Because in Iowa, it's one of the few teams in college football that ask their O-linemen to do NFL stuff. Yeah. And you that, talk about me, like getting out, stepping getting, it, getting right, out of the edge. All, all of it. Just like the, the real – they have real running plays. It's yeah. not just inside, outside zone. We only have two running plays. That's yeah. most of college football. That's Mississippi State. We only got these plays. You know, yeah, he's doing down blocks, double teams, you know, you know, down, you know, kick out blocks, whatever. He's anything that's being asked to pull, you know, double team. And then let's work to the second level and we'll communicate it as we're doing the double team to figure out who goes up there. You know, he's that's where he's got an advantage over a lot of these guys coming in the draft. So we have six offensive linemen. You yeah. have six uh, on your quote top five. I think we've had three. Yeah, three interior. We've had two guards in the center, only one tackle. Yeah. So we're moving into the top two. The big top two. And we are nothing but tackles from here on out. Yeah, nothing but tackles here on out. It's the big two. We know who they are. I mean, the big two are, are Evan Neal and, you know, Icky Iquanu. all right? And I am making Icky Iquanu my number two. All right, and then let me just say this is not easy. I was going to say, how difficult was that? Was parsing this that? This could out? be a one or a one A type okay. of thing. This is, a, this is a phenomenal football player, and I'm going to state right now that overall, Iki Aquanu's film was better than Evan Neal's. Huh. Okay, it was better overall. So you're going to have to wait till I get to Evan Neal okay. to ask her that question. Okay. Why? Why he's one? You uh, can see it in the in the word bubble above yeah, my head. Yeah, yeah, I know. I you want to ask? So <laughs> wait, why is he? So overall film is phenomenal, mm -hmm. okay? The guy could be a guard, but he's made for left tackle. I mean, so there's a little versatility there for sure. But, like, incredible athlete, incredible get-off, you know, the power to move and dig and root people out, no doubt about it. You know, all the movement stuff is really, really special. I mean, to be 320, he carries it very easily. He doesn't even look 320 on the film when the way he moves and does everything. But I think between that, I mean, it's, it's like elite explosiveness, elite change of direction ability. You know, the redirects, like we're talking about, going to the second level, the linebacker tries to juke him out. No, not so fast. Not around this guy. He's going to be there to, to knock you out. You know, blows people back on contact. You know, so that's, I mean, right away you see that and you just go, man, the guy's got it all. There's nothing in his game that he physically can't do and most things he does at a very elite level. In the ACC, did, did you have much film to look at where he was going at an ass kicker on the other side as well? Yeah, yeah it's not as much. Like when they played Florida State, right? Florida State, they, they did a good job of not putting their best guy over him the whole game. Yeah. Right. So there was that. And that would be some of the negatives we talk about here with him. Again, this is a phenomenal football player. Very worthy of being a top five pick for sure. All right. Um, you know, but like, yes, the, the true NFL pure pass protection plays are not many in the NC State offense. There's not a lot of times he's asked there to be like, hey, protect for four seconds. The quarterback's going to take a seven-step drop, and we're reading you know, the post to the deep corner to the crosser coming across. We want you to hold up. Uh, almost everything is get it out quick, you know, RPO. No, no, no. So it's like, holy shit, this is the 60th play of the game. He's only really pass protected <laughs> four times the whole game. Yeah. I mean, holy crap. It drives you crazy. So, But you know, even within all that, you know, th there's nothing there negatively other than – there's some pass protection areas that need to be cleaned up. But again, we're being nitpicky. I'm holding to like top five of the draft type of conversation here. I, I've seen sloppy feet can lead him to struggle. A little bit. You, you know, buy that? Yeah, a little. I think sloppy feet sometimes um, in the pass game can kind of like, you know, make the initial contact and hit with you and then kind of lean on you and stop his feet. And then people might go around. So there's a little bit of that to where I would go. The weight gets over his toes a little sometimes mm. on contact instead of kind of sitting in yeah. there and having that base underneath you, right? So it's that. But, like, again, it's not like you see it every game or all the time. It's just, okay, here it is. And it's fixable with the kind of athlete and power this guy has. It's still an incredible, you know, anchor. 
Um, and the other thing I like, Paul, as the season goes along, I felt like some of that stuff got cleaned up Good. where he got better and better at it. You know, he stopped letting pass rushers get all their momentum and run into him at full speed. He started to learn to like, wait, wait, I got these long freaking arms. Let me throw it out there and stun you a little bit so you can't come into me at 100 miles per hour. So awesome football player. Clearly expect him to be the top five. In fact, I really think Houston will take him at number three. I just feel like it's a Houston Nick Casario pick. Are you saying that because you think Evan Neal will be gone? I think Evan Neal will probably go after him. Mm. Evan Neal will be my favorite. He will be Chris Sims' favorite left tackle, who if I was a GM, I would take him one. Mm. But I think, yes, I'm just – I know NFL and how it works and how some of these GM you know, so clean the tape like we talk about and all that. There, there's some that are just going to fall in love with it, and I'm rightly so. The guy is really good, and I think it is debatable about who the, the number one pick is. I'm not certainly sitting here trying to say what I say goes in stone and you listen to me forever. Just one opinion. Yeah. I, I want to read this opinion to you, and you can yeah. take it wherever you'd like to go. This is from NFL.com. It's like watching Greg Robinson all over again when he was coming out of Auburn. He's got that same rawness and protection and power in the running game. More thoughtful player and more likely to get his issues fixed. That's, that's from an area scout for an NFC team. What do you think? I, 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 rem I mean, I studied Greg Robinson hard coming out. I mean, I, I th this kid's film's cleaner than Greg Robinson. Greg Robinson was one of those where I felt like it was a little more like Charles Cross, where you went, whoa, I see all this talent, and it's really good. But, man, there's some rawness and some crap we got to fix here, but the potential is amazing, right? And, yeah, of course it didn't work out. I don't look at this guy being that raw. Mm. No. This is, to me, is like we're talking minor, minor adjustments here. The pass protection issues were not that of, like, you know, where I go, oh, man, that's really scary to me. I never was like that. I just one of the, the, one of the only things I wrote that were negative, and, and I just, as I get into it, I don't want to give up some of my other stuff on my other guy here. You know, I just wrote, you know, anchor and punch are not as good as the qu the top guy that we're mm -hmm. going to talk about here in a minute. You know, um, and 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 in that pass protection, he will lean and miss at times, like I talked about. Yeah. You know, and that's again, I guess because of the footwork a little bit and all that, but it's it's minute. Yeah. It's minute. It's a really clean film. This guy. I'm, I'm listening to you, and I think that was a really good intro to the player for those of us who didn't know him that well coming in. I feel like my follow-ups and the questions I have are kind of in relation to your number one guy, I know, Evan Neal. Let's Neil. do it. So let's let's just do it. Let's we just get to number him. one. Yeah. Listen, because I want to tell you when I write, when I watch these uh, all, and I, that's why I have a hard time when I read through my notes. Yeah. Because I compare through my notes. Yeah. Yeah. So I don't want to give it off to you. Right. But I compare as I go. Yeah. I go wait. This guy did this better than this guy. This guy did it worse than this guy. And I write those things down to kind of continue to keep my brain and, like, remembering of where I think certain areas this guy was great. And I compare them that way. That's how yeah. I do my evaluation. Okay. Yeah. So, yeah, let's get it. You want to get to Evan Neal, the number one tackle in the draft? Let's get to Evan Neal. Yeah. And we, we can kind of continue to roll in the comparisons here as let's you're talking about Evan. Yeah, that's a great way to do it. Um, Evan Neal won – all right, is a gigantic human being. Six seven three fifty. Three fifty. It's an easy three fifty. I saw him at the combine along with Icky. You know, they're both impressive bodies. But yeah, this is a different. This is a different guy. It's like the easiest three fifty you've ever seen. That's good. It, it's easy, right? Mm. And it's not sloppy either. It's not like you turn on the film and go, "Oh man, his his belly's really jiggling." Right. And I see his tricep there, and he's got twelve pounds of fat on his tricep. You know, it's not that at all. So the film itself is not. Not as clean as icky right like i talked about you know there's a few things here and there and the run game though only in the run game yes can he get faked out in space every now and then can he maybe take the wrong angle to the second level and not be the machine icky was always at making that block no doubt is he as good in the wide receiver screen and getting out and blocking a corner or a linebacker on the edge to you know you know, get your receiver off as Icky. No, Icky's better at all those things, right? But this is the best pass-protecting left tackle I have ever seen. And since I've been doing this, I've never seen anybody as good as this. So, like, six? We're getting 10, 11, 10 years. Wow. The best you've ever seen. No, this is, this is f***ing wall. Nobody gets close 
with Evan Neal. Then why would, and this is probably a couple of levels past. Yeah. Because they're going to see other things in this film and they're going to go, well, it's not as good as Icky. Mm. It's, not, it's not always as clean. This kid has a little of the issues Icky does in the way I talk about in the pass game of leaning. Yeah. This guy at times will be leaner in the run game. You, you can know? live with that more I can. than the passing game, right? I'm going with the pass game. Yeah. That's just the way I feel. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I'm going to go with the guy that's the pass, best pass. The guy that I saw play NFL defense ends every week. Yeah. And nobody ever get close, including the guy that a lot of people think is going to be the number one or two pick. Not even close to which, the quarterback. Which one are you talking Trayvon about? Trayvon Walker from Georgia. Yeah. I mean, they played him twice. It's just... It's a clinic. Now, they don't play Trayvon Walker the right way all the time, like you've heard me discuss, and they don't let him like really rush the passer. But either way, the guy has very good lateral quickness. Like His feet aren't as good as Icky's, but they're a little less. All right, But his anchor is as good as I've seen. Nobody pushes him back. And then his punch with his arms is off the charts good. You want to talk about, like, when his hands get on you, it is over. It is over. Mm. And he is great at meeting the pass rusher. You know, getting out of his step, getting an initial punch, and the guy's like, oh, and it just ruins all their momentum. And you're like, well, it's over now. You're done. It's, he's got you. It's done. Yeah. Let alone guys that try to get, like, every now and then you might go, ooh, they're going to get him around the edge. And you know what happens? He's so fucking big and long that he still gets an arm or something on it and pushes the guy five yards upfield, and he doesn't even get close to the quarterback. Yeah. And that's, to me, that's, see, that's where, like, Orlando Brown and some of those guys do. That, that's where it's a little different, let alone the Cam Jordans of the world and them can't power rush them either. So, again, the film not the same, but the pass protection's off the charts good, and then the running game concerns I have, they're not that big. You see him do all the things I said that I wish he was a little – you see him do them at a high level plenty of times. Yeah. It's just not every time. You know, so it's not again like I don't know if he can do this. It's just like oh, he's got to get a little better. At this he's got to clean this up. Yeah. But you talk about then if you want to give me the guy, I think if you give me the guy where I go, it's third and one. We got to have it to win the Super Bowl right here, mm -hmm. and we got to run behind somebody. I'm going behind Evan Neal. Yeah. I am over Icky as yeah. much as I think Icky gets off the ball too. Evan Neal has moments of absolutely fucking mauling people in front of him. Like they have no chance. It's like. It's like you and me lined up over him, and we're going on a roller coaster ride. Yeah. They just roar, and all of a sudden you're like, man, this is 300 pound lineman here. He right. just pushed seven yards down the field. I think he's special and an amazing pass protector. Let's say, let's say I am the GM of the Texans, okay, and you know that I want to take the NC State kid. Mm. You're the O-line coach for the Texans. You've spent months watching these two, and you just have conviction, like you said, that even though you like them both a lot, Evan Neal is the guy you want. Run game and pass game. Yeah. You got 30 seconds with the GM before you meet to the head coach to tell him why he should take Evan Neal. Yeah. I know you have 10 minutes to say about it. Yeah. What's your headline about Mr. GM? We got to take this guy. The, 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 I've never, the, the, we'll have zero issues in pass protection with this guy. Everything that, we, everything we got to worry about with this guy is just, yeah. we got to learn just a few little steps and techniques and things just to get to the second level or adjust to somebody making a move on me in space. And I would go, but man, you know, it's a passing league. There's a lot of great pass rushers ruining, ruining games for the other team right now. Yeah. And you don't ever have to worry about this with this guy at tackle. There you go. That's where, I mean, that, that to me. You can walk out the door with that. It, I went back and forth here, but I just, as I went back and forth more and more as time went on, I just go, I, I even though the other guy's maybe better in more areas than the other guy, the area that's most important to me is that pass protecting area. And Evan yeah. Neal to me is elite yeah. at, at, in that department. I think you summed that up really well. I mean, if, if you're going to rate five areas, maybe your second guy is higher in all five, but the one he's better at, that is the skill, it's the skill. that you have to have. No question. And then with all like the different types of pass rushers, yep. You know, again, you get one week it's Joey Bosa, the next week it's whoa, it's DeForest Buckner. Yeah. It's a different human here, you know. Then it's Khalil Mack, and you're like, whoa, whoa. I mean, it's just it's all over the place. And to me, Neil, the 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 foot quickness, let alone with the anchor and the ability to punch and the arms and all that, 
uh, was, like I said, I thought it was off the charts good for, it, for a college left tackle. Doesn't sound like you're describing somebody who would be a problem in the run game. No, it's not. Exactly right. He's not going to be a problem in as the run game. As long as he's decent. Yes. Yeah. It's, it, it's better or maybe than, even better. It is. Yeah. It's better than defense. You know, again, that's where I, when we're picking these two guys apart here, we're talk, I'm talking like it's better than everybody else. Yeah. We're just comparing them against these, their, the, each other, which they're, they're in a, a league of their own. You know, but yeah, the negatives, like I talked about, can lean on people in the run game. He can fall off. You know, I would say he was on the ground maybe a time or two more than I would like. He's too talented to be on the ground. But I think, again, that goes into the leaning thing, right? But the toughness is real. Anything straight ahead is off the charts good. Mm. It's phenomenal that way. And like I said, it's just the change of direction, redirection stuff in the run game, not in the pass game. You know, the pass game, he's a machine. And so that is also what leads leads you to believe, like, hey, this guy can get to the second level and do those things we're talking about. I see him mirror pass rushers better than anybody else in the NFL draft here. Yeah. So he can do that. Um, but the power is real, run and pass. And and I said, even at the end, I said, and all I've said even about the change of direction and redirect, it's still really good. And I've yet to see a bad pass pro. He is an incredible anchor, an incredible punch, and he attacks pass rushers. You know, um, let me just see. You know, fix one or two things in the run game. I think you got it all. Yeah. Gets his hands on point. you, it's over. Yeah. And, yeah, it's, it's, this, is, this is, to me, the best tackle in the draft. You want to have some fun watching a big guy do a great box jump? Oh, yeah. Have Let's, you seen I, this? Yeah, I have. I, ha- I had some fun with him this already. <laughs> You've already done that? I did. I had fun with him specifically. I got oh. to... <laughs> now, so, first off, does this look like a guy that's 350 to you? And look he, at that body. Box jump, split squat. A box jump, Sticks split it. squat. And he's 350. At six seven, everyone. Now, that's what I mean. It's the easiest three fifty you've ever seen. When I saw him in person, I just went, I I can't believe this is a guy that's three hundred and fifty pounds. Five times more impressive than a three hundred and twenty pound offensive lineman running a four nine forty. That right there. Well it's that's a better sign of like athleticism and and explosion. That's where their game is. Exactly right. Exactly that's what some of these things have just have been made too much or too important. Right. Uh, in, in the scouting world, it's just too nitpicky over stuff where you go, I don't know what, who cares about the last 35 yards of that guy's race? I don't care. <laughs> Thinking about matter. the scouting world, this time of year, we used to always do this. I, I say we, I, I would see people and hear the conversations about Alabama running backs. Well, let's compare the other Alabama running backs the last 10 yeah, years. So let's, right. let's do this a little bit here with sure. the Alabama offensive lineman. Uh, do you think he's being overrated at all? And I think I know the answer. Uh, we're looking at past. Alabama O tackles taken. Uh, Alex Leatherwood last year, 17 to the Las Vegas Raiders. Yeah. Wills the year before. Williams the year before. Ryan Kelly at center. Yeah. Uh, Chance Warmack, DJ Fluker. So, what do you make of this Alabama lineage there on the offensive yeah. line in the first well, round? Not all of them have lived up to, I guess, expectations. Some of them have. I Should mean, that be any part of his evaluation? Yeah, no, I get it. Well, you know, listen. I understand the question and where we are here. Alabama, yeah, a lot of times maybe they maybe get a little overrated or whatever because you just go, well, we know they're coached the right way. You know, mm-hmm. you know they're doing NFL-type stuff. You know, to where, yeah, do I think a guy like Alex Leatherwood probably last year got a little overdrafted? I do, yeah. We'll see where it goes. And I think nat- uh, eventually he's going to be a, a guard all the time, I think. Mm. Um, but, like, you can't let that stuff affect you, right? Because if we went on the uh, – well, look at what happened here. Uh, the, the, they, Alabama sent out D. Milner. We shouldn't draft any more Alabama <laughs> corners. Oh, yeah? Tell right. me about Patrick Chertain or Marlon Humphrey or Drake Kirkpatrick or where the, Landon Collins. Right. Where do you want me to end the f-ing right. conversation? Right. After what pro bowler? So don't let, like, one or two. That list is good. Yeah. Wills hasn't maybe been as good as we want, but it's still been good. Um, Just, I don't think yeah. this guy's being overrated. I and you, you know what I think. Yeah, no, it sounds I mean, like your evaluation I'm, I'm, of him. I'm a lover of him. I mean, t- the last ten years, you haven't seen a left tackle better. I mean, not it doesn't matter what his like helmet is, what his uniform is in college. You're not going to say that. Unless you really, really think it, like it's not going to get escalated just because he went to school. No, exactly right. Place. Exactly, that's exactly. You're not going to make that it. comment. Exactly. Just because he went to Alabama. Just because he went to Alabama. You I'm might not push a that. third round pick into the second round. But you're not going to make you're, you're not going to say gonna speak best that well to somebody. That, yes, exactly right. Yeah, that, that's I think the best way to defend myself. You're right. I think I'm going to use that for now on. I'm here for you. Yeah, thank yeah. you very much. Um, but yeah, he's uh, this. It's a hell of a football player, and so is Icky. You know, again, my big thing is is yeah, I'm putting him a tackle, and Evan Neal. 
fourth quarter, first quarter, doesn't matter what the team, what the scheme is, I don't worry about him pass protecting against anybody in the sport. I don't. Icky, on the other hand, like I told you, um, I, I, I have a little, little worry about the big power pass rushers with him. And that, to me, was the difference. I don't worry about the speed guys. Yeah. Icky's going to be fine with the speed guys. It's the real 280, you know, defense end, the Cameron Jordans of the world like I'm talking about. That's the guy. Or, you know, again, Nick Bosa, yeah, it's 260, but he has the power and he goes speed to power on you. Yeah. That, that's the guy I worry about a little bit with Icky. Let's take a look at your top six here. As now we've been through the – all the way through the number one, Evan Neal, the offensive tackle from Alabama. And to me, I look at this group and I can think about one little thing or a couple little things you said about each one, but – what I remember most from this last hour is you think all six of these guys belong in the first round. No question. Yeah. I think all six belong in the first round. Wouldn't be shocked if we saw all six of these guys off the board by 25, really. I really wouldn't. And, you know, that's six guys. And really, you know, again, I think if we're going to be fair, you know, there, there's two more guys to me that you could probably – that are in the first round conversation. And I expect – at least one of them, maybe both of them, to go in the first round. I do. And that's where I come off going. I think there'll be eight linemen drafted in the first. We're going to get to the honorable mentions. Yeah. Uh, let's visit a little subject here from our friends at PointsBet. First offensive lineman drafted odds. And I would imagine that Evan Neal is – I think Icky's going to be the leader. You think Icky's up I think Icky's, first? Icky's the, the, the household leader name right now. Okay. You know, that, that, that to me. And, again, I understand it like, I, like we talked about. You're right. Yeah. It's, it's barely it's ba barely but it's, yeah. it's like we talked about I feel like you know more GMs and not are gonna like his tape because like we said it's cleaner in all areas so he's uh he's at negative 150 to be the first offensive lineman drafted Evan Neal plus 140 big big drop off down to plus 700 for the next one that's Charles Cross yeah have you made me read between the tea leaves or connect dots or whatever else I think it will go Aiden Hutchinson one Walker, two, from Georgia. And like I said, I think number three, the Texans, I just feel like it's going to be e uh, icky. Mm. I do. I just I look at that and go, wait, they got tons of left tackle. They got Mark Ca Marcus Cannon at right tackle, who's going into year 11 or 12. You know, they got two guards in Titus Howard and Sharping who are solid but nothing special to where I just go, you bring icky. And you can do whatever you want. You can go, hey, you go right tackle for this year, and we'll move Marcus Cannon into a guard position, which he has done in New England too. Mm -hmm. Or you just go, no, Icky, you're a, you could be an amazing guard. We'll just we'll keep for now. We're gonna keep Marcus Cannon a tackle, Tunzel the other tackle, and you'll play one of the guards, and we'll figure out the other two spots. Yeah, uh, that that I don't know. To me, that's where I just feel like this is going. Uh, yeah, but I don't know that. Even if Aiden Hutchinson goes one overall, Neil Iquano worthy of being the first overall pick? They are. They are worthy. Yeah. They I, I don't I wouldn't be mad if either one of them went first. I wouldn't sit there and go, Oh my gosh, I cannot believe they went one. That's so stupid. I yeah. definitely would not. Either one of them. No, absolutely not. Yeah. So oh they and the Texans cut cut Marcus Cannon. So there you go. So there's makes me believe it even more. Yeah. I forgot they cut him. Yeah. So I was already thinking that before him. That's where I need to look up those little details. I just go off the top of my head too much. <laughs> We're making our way to the honorable mention who you also think uh, potential first-round picks. But first, a reminder to download the PointsBet app. Use code NBC2K to sign up. That's right. Get two risk-free bets for up to $2,000. If you're in an eligible state, PointsBet has an exclusive sign-up offer for unbutton unbuttoned listeners that you can't miss. Download the PointsBet app. Do it now. Do it. All right? <laughs> Use code NBC, NBC2K to sign up and get two risk-free bets up to $2,000. So if you bet $50 and lose, guess what? You will get free bets worth $50 once the game starts. Don't just bet. Live your bet life with points bet. Do it. You threw in that whole do it routine in the middle and at the end for free. Thanks, yeah, for free. That's, That's just what are. I do. That's what I do. Put it on my tab, okay? <laughs> Put it on my tab. A jersey read, A Pete jersey says. read, yep. That's right. Is Pete a jersey? P no, Pete, you know, he's from East Jersey. Let's call it Queens. Qu it's East, East Jersey. Queens. Right. It's a little level below Jersey. 
Long Island, <laughs> so it's East Jersey. Below, like on the map, or below some other. Below way? Uh, all all angles, everything you Just can think below, of. Long period. Island's below New Jersey. All okay. Right. <laughs> Pete had no rebuttal. I know, I know. That's great. That's great. It's glad he doesn't have a mic either. He can. Nobody can hear what he says, anyways. Uh, I do want to get into our honorable yes, mentions here. Yes. Back, For, to, back to the great state of Iowa. Right, back to the Trevor Penning, Northern Iowa, certainly. Big body, right? Now, big body, got all the long arms, pretty good athlete, right? Uh, as everything you want, you know, as far as being a left tackle or a tackle in the NFL. He's not dominant. Okay, that's the one thing I would say, especially for his level of competition. There's just a little too much to me where I want to go kind of just gets it done. But, you know, again, you don't get to see against a lot of high level defense ends. He's kind of in a class of his own that way, that way. And, you know, to me, that's why I would probably put the other guy, Bernard Raymond, in front of him Mm. because there was a little bit more of a better competition aspect. And I thought a little bit more of a physical dominant play as compared to Penning. But to me, both guys are first-round tackles. Wow. I do. I would think somewhere between 20 and 32, you see you know, see these guys go. But, yeah, very good football players. And one more here. And then I want to give the guy that's not going to be a first-round pick, but just one of my favorite watches mm-hmm. and a guy that I think has got a lot of potential is the Tyler Smith from Tulsa. Would you like so much? Well, he's probably the most physical lineman in the whole draft. I mean – that's killer, mauler. That's a great compliment. And he's a good athlete. Yeah. But. It must be a big butt here. Well, the butt is just, it's, it's, it's raw. Yeah. I mean, nobody's taught him how to do anything past pro. He's just doing it with his God-given ability. It's like they just said, like, here's a basketball. Go play one-on-one against it. He's just, he's out there like, oh, let me just move my feet this way and that way, and I'll just block you. I don't know how I did it, <laughs> but I did. Yeah. And then he pulls the next play, and. He's at left tackle, and you know he pulls one play, and he leads with the right foot. You go, oh, that's good. And then I watch the next play, and he does like a karaoke out of it, and then pulls. And you're like, what? So there's some rawness there. He has not been coached at all. But when you talk about power, strength, you know, knocking people off the ball, attitude, yeah. he's. Ma- I mean, he can be a left tackle in the NFL, I think he'd be a guard, like, right away. Yeah. Right. And he, karaoke is like, you know, when people twist know, yeah. their feet and twist their feet. We used to have to do it all the time. Yeah, for like warm-up in a football. Yeah. Right, right. When was exactly. the last time that you were going to do a workout that you, did, you like, did karaoke Every on your own? one. For real? Every, like, like, now? Every workout. You do it? I do it. I am, like, the nerd long? at the gym that does fast feet. And yeah. then I do butt kicks, and then I do straight leg bounds, and then I do side <laughs> shuffles, and then I do backwards run. It's like in your basement, in your driveway, and in your no garage, matter where, what, no yeah. matter where. If I'm gonna work out, I'm going through that warm up. So like, if 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 I'm the Chris Sims neighbor and I'm driving to the grocery store, I might look in the driveway and see Chris doing karaoke. Definitely, hundred percent. It's phenomenal. Hundred percent. Yeah, yeah. I did it Saturday at my workout before the gym. Did it all. That's right. I got to do it now, too. Now I'm at the age where I'm like, if I don't warm up, I like, hey. have a bacchiotomy. And I'm like, I, got, yeah. I'm like, I don't feel right. Something's your right wrong. back and your yeah. left back. <laughs> exactly. Okay, so I'm going to ask you to, to um, connect the dots. All right, read the tea leaves. Okay. Connect the tea leaves if you'd like. I, I like You can to. read the dots. Sure. So Pete, Pete has included one question here yeah. before we go away. Yeah. Who's Pete's favorite team? Who do you think this might be about? The G-Men. Yeah. That's what we are. The team that, that uh, gave you the 400 question. Yeah, those assholes. True or false, yeah. multiple choice. Okay, Giants. Graham Joyce, would it make sense for the Giants to bookend their line by taking two tackles at five and seven? Hmm. Or should they use one of those picks on a pass rusher? I would like one of them on a pass rusher. Okay. I would. I would love for us to take. Doesn't two- sound like either one of those those two offensive tackles are going to be there at five. Well, it's going to be interesting. I mean. You wouldn't be surprised if they were, they were gone. I wouldn't, but I'm just thinking off the top of my head. No, I would think you're going to have one of them at five. I don't think the Jets are going to be in the in the business of tackle at four. Okay. I don't think so. You know, they took Elijah Vera Tucker last year. They got Makai Beckton from the year before that. Uh, how many you know? How many resources are we going to spend on the offensive line? They have other things. That, so, you know, the Texans at three. If they go one, the other one should be left over. I want the Giants to take it. Okay. All right. Yes, and I am rooting for the Giants to get Evan Neal. Um. Pete so, says, what if somebody wants to trade ahead of the Panthers to five? Is that what he said? All right. Well, then that's going to be – I wouldn't, especially if Evan Neal or Icky are there. You wouldn't trade I it? would not. No. To me, again, this is we classify under these two guys stand above the rest. There's a separation. 
So you better get some great package to go down and get one of these other tackles that is going to be riskier. Yeah. And I want to go Giants. We we just took a tackle at four, and it's you know it hasn't been great so far. It's finally going in the right direction. But no, I don't think we should bookend it either. I should have tackle at five. We'll have Andrew Thomas in one tackle. We'll have whoever we get a pick number five at the other tackle, and then we'll fill in the rest from there. You know, and then I w- yes, I want us to get a pass rusher, the Giants. I do. Us, us. Yeah. I'm a G-man fan. Yes, I want to. <laughs> I see. I want one of these damn pass rushers. You know, whether it's the Florida State kid. Um, you know, maybe this is a place. Maybe they trade down seven. You would do it there. I could see that. Maybe Wink Martindale might go, you know what? I don't want the kid from Florida State. I don't need that, like, speed pass rusher off the edge. I'm Baltimore defense, right? Mm. I'm more of this Darius Thomas, you know, Matt Judon type. I like Karlaftis from, from, from Purdue. Purdue. Yeah, Move us down a few spots. I'll take, take him. him. If that's the, Then fine. But, yes, I would love to see pass protector and pass rusher on the Giants draft. I've had a great one-two football less than 24 hours. USFL last night. Woo! Little little offensive lineman talk with Chris. The Damn, next day. yeah, and you look good, and you're you're like, oh, yeah. you, I don't even look tired. Damn, they must have to put you to work more. Maybe there's a locker more. room right down the hall. Did you know that? No, you can like come in from the airport and like you know freshen up. Is that what you did today? Yeah. Wow, you didn't go home yet? No. Wow. Yeah. I feel bad. No. I do. This is a good day. Yeah. It's a good day. Really. Right, good. Good. I'm glad Wasn't you're happy. Wasn't kidding around. Yeah. All right, good. Good to hear that. Watch the USFL next week. Right, we're, well, on, we're on Friday I, night. I watched a little. I yeah. watched a little this week. So, yeah. Yeah. I'll, I'll, I'll start, continue to die. It's hard. It was hard on a holiday weekend. I know. Especially Easter, yesterday. Yeah. Easter weekend is. You know, I'm outside hiding eggs for the kids. I'm having baseball catches. Right. There's kids yelling and screaming everywhere. Yeah. There's NBA playoffs on. I mean, it was just a lot of shit going on. I hear you. Yeah. But I'll I saw enough. You. I got to yeah. feel. I got to feel. Yeah. That's so, fun. All right. That's Hang fun. in there, Slugger. Thank you. All right. You yeah. only got a few more weeks left of me. Actually, no, you got a lot more than that. We right? do this. So what, 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 what are we on? We're in mid-April? Mid-April. We'll do it through yeah, is, June. Is June 1? Yeah, we'll do June. Yeah. And then we got one story here. All right. Timeless sports. Dion. Who's Dion? Oh, my gosh. Dion with Andrea Kramer. 1989. The Giants told him to do a written test, and he asked them what pick they had. Yes. Tenth pick. <laughs> Dion. <laughs> I'll be gone before then. Damn, how did the Giants get the 10th pick that year? <laughs> the Giants in 89. How did they 89. get the 10th pick? 80, 88, 88, the Giants lost the last game of the year to miss the playoffs. If they won, they got home field advantage. If they lost, they didn't make the playoffs. How crazy is That's that? That's good Giant right? recall. So they lost yeah. to the Jets, actually. But 89, so they, man, that would have been so awesome if Deion Sanders was on the Giants when I was there as a little kid. Bottom man. line, though, Deion also did not like the Giants test. Well, of course not. Who the f*** would? <laughs> anybody with brains doesn't like it. Anybody with a life would not like the Giants test. I mean, Lawrence Taylor definitely didn't take that test. I know that. Yeah. I and was I just doubt so, Phil Sims did either. I was so happy to be at the Combine. If it was 800 questions... I would have done all 800. He would have done, yeah, I Is there you. more? <laughs> Is there an extra credit yeah, portion? Right. right. <laughs> yeah. I know. I, I need to go back in time. But, yeah, Dion was going to do that. I love Dion's pre-draft stories. They're amazing. Can you imagine Dion Sanders on the same defense as Lawrence Taylor? That would be <laughs> unreal. That locker room would be unreal. I would wish that would have happened. But Dion, between that story right there, which I've heard before, and then, you know, of course, the 40 time where he just shows up lines up runs the 40 puts his mink coat on and leaves again <laughs> i mean that's just i haven't heard the mink coat that's just portion baller. of it yeah. was it was like a four or, i heard like 419 418 yeah. 49 right 416 yeah, yeah. insane yeah. yeah fastest human ever yeah all right everybody be good uh we got thursday all right thursday these nice people here at NBC are giving me a little bit of an extra day. Oh, you get right? the, a, a little yeah. cushion. A little cushion here. To do, to do Just what? to finish off the D-tackles and the linebackers. I'm pretty much done with the D-tackles. Yeah. All right. Uh, just started on the linebackers. So feeling good. But Thursday, we'll be doing that. Ahmed will be here. This will be our final positional draft rankings of the 2022 draft season. Check it out. Subscribe, rate, review. You know where to find us. We're here at NBC Sports, okay? Uh, Polly, you the man. Good to see you. Good to see you. You should do some karaoke before the linebackers. I, I will. Okay, I'll do it. I'll get warmed up. I'll get ready to go. I'll show you guys what it's all about next time. Peace out. Everybody be good. Talk to you. Hi, I'm Mike Tirico, and thanks for watching. Make sure to hit subscribe for the latest news and highlights from NBC Sports.